ಯಾಮನ ಥೇರ ಭನಚಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಚನ ಬಾಲ ಭಾಕಿರಿತ್ ಬರೆದಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಚನ ಬಾಲ ಭಾಕಿರಿತ್ ಬರೆದಾರಿ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದ ನಂದನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನರಂಜನ ಯಾಮುನ ಥೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಯಾಮುನ ಥೇರ ವನಚಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಗೌರ್ ಪ್ರೇಮನಂದೇ ಹರಿಬೋ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಪದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಸ್ತಾಯ ಬುತ್ತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇತಿ ನಾಮನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಶ್ಚಾಚ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಾಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ 
नमो भगवते वसुदेवाय सो दे इज ए अस्पेशियस अकेजन ऑफ अक्षय तृतीया and also today is the first day of chandan yatra so uh we will speak on these topics this morning uh akshaya tritiya akshaya meaning eternal and tritiya the third day of the moon in the month right just like we have ekadashi the 11th day and we have chaturdashi the 14th day so tritiya is the third day and akshaya tritiya eternal uh it is said that the benefit you get from performing pious activities on this day is very great so we see in in the ordinary life in the material world people take advantage of this day to perform activities such as marriages often take place on this day and also uh people like if they're moving into a new house they move in on this day and people opening a business they may open choose this day for the first day and people may sign contracts on this day it's considered to be a, a, a an auspicious day but it's especially good for devotees if whatever service we do on this day we get great benefit of course we're doing service every day so for devotees it's not very significant but for those who are not devotees it's a great impetus to them to do some devotional service so we see people like to give charity so if they give charity on this day it's very good for them people who don't usually do much devotional activities if they perform some devotional activities on this day then they're greatly benefited uh it's also said this akshaya tritiya was the day it was on this particular day that satya yuga began <laughs> satya yuga you know satya yuga that's a very long time ago of course by at the end of kali yuga then we will begin satya yuga again so satya yuga be, begins on this day akshaya tritiya another point about akshaya tritiya it said uh, on this particular day they open the road to go up to the uh char dams the four holy places in the himalayas badrinath kedarnath gangotri and yamunotri because all winter the road is closed with the snow and the, the rain and fog and everything but this is like the most suitable time the summer is coming and are begun now and they're able to open the road and pilgrims make their way up to padrinath and visit these places so from this day on goes on up to somewhere in uh, in october and will close again so mainly we want to speak about chandan yatra akshaya tritiya good day do devotional service give books distribute books give donations give charity do service for krishna great benefit but today is also chandan yatra a day in which we uh perform special worship of the deity and the worship is done by applying sandalwood paste over the body 
of the deity. Now, interesting, just yesterday when I was reading the Srimad Bhagavatam at this time, when we were giving class on Srimad Bhagavatam, we were reading how Mother Yashoda brought Krishna home to wash him and to dress him and decorate him. And Prabhupada had written in the purport there saying that Krishna actually, he's always pure. He's never dirty or contaminated. He's always pure. But Mother Yashoda, she thinks of Krishna like her ordinary child. She doesn't think of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, like any other mother, she likes to clean the body of her child and dress him nicely and decorate him and then send him to go and play with the other children. So similarly, when we worship the deity, the deity is the transcendental form of the Lord. It is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita as Satya Vigraha, the form of the absolute truth. So the deity is always pure, but we as devotees, we take great pleasure in bathing the deity and dressing the deity and decorating the deity. And on this particular day, because it's coming into the middle of summer and the season is, the weather gets very hot. So to keep the body of the deity cool, we apply sandalwood paste on the body of the deity. Now, Krishna, of course, he's not disturbed by the heat. He's transcendental to heat and cold. But the devotee wants, they, they want to give service to Krishna and they take pleasure in giving this kind of service to Krishna. Applying the sandalwood paste will certainly be very cooling on the body of any person. So in the same way, we apply the sandalwood paste on the body of the deity. Hare Krishna. Uh, in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, we worship the deity as a transcendental person. In Hindu temples, generally, in Hindu temples are usually very much influenced by the Mayavadi philosophy. So Mayavadi philosophers, they say, Brahman Satyam Jagat Mitya. This world is all false. Only the Brahman is true. But we say the, this material world is not false. And similarly, the Mayavadi philosophers, they say that when Krishna comes into this world, he takes a material body. But we say Krishna always has a transcendental form. His body is never material. So the form of the deity is also not material. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas, he took initiation in the line of Uh, in the line of Madhvacharya, he took initiation from Ishwara Puri. And Ishwara Puri was a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Now, when Lord Chaitanya went to Udupi, when he was traveling around South India, 
he came to Udupi and he was very happy to see the beautiful deity of Krishna there. There's a very, very wonderful deity of Krishna in the form of a cowherd boy described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that he is a dancing Krishna it, and it's this deity was brought by Madhva Acharya. It is said that in originally this deity of Ud Udupi Krishna was worshipped by Rukmini. When Rukmini was residing in Dwarka, sometimes Lord Krishna would go to travel and go to visit different places. And Rukmini, in her separation from Krishna, she was given this deity of Lord Krishna as a cowherd boy to worship. So later on it happened that Madhvacharya was residing there in South India at Udupi and he would regularly sit on the shore because it's on the coast, near the coast, he would regularly sit on the shore and meditate across the sea. So it happened on one occasion while Madhvacharya was sitting there on the shore, some ship came by and the ship got into difficulties. It became stuck. But Madhvacharya, who was sitting there watching, he was able to give instruction to the captain of the ship to help the captain of the ship to free the ship so that it could continue on its way. And the captain of the ship was so much thankful to Madhvacharya for his help that he said, can I offer you anything? Can I give you anything to repay you for what you've done for me? So Madhvacharya told him, he told the captain that on your ship, I know you have a big lump of Gopi Chandan. Gopi Chandan comes from Dwarka. So Madhvacharya asked the captain, can you please give me that lump of Gopi Chandan which you're carrying in your ship? So it was arranged that Gopi Chandan, a big lump of Gopi Chandan was given to Madhvacharya. And then Madhvacharya took that lump of Gopi Chandan and he put it into the sea water. And when he put it into the sea water, then from within the Gopi Chandan came up, they, they found that within that Gopi Chandan there was this beautiful deity of Lord Krishna as a cowherd boy. So this deity was taken by Madhvacharya and installed and they began the worship there. Madhvacharya's temple in Udupi, there are several ashrams. I think, is it eight maybe or twelve? Anyway, there's a good number of ashrams and the system is that each ashram will take a turn to worship the deity. They will worship the deity for one year. And while they're worshipping the deity, the other ashrams will all go out for preaching. So in this way, the deity worship is maintained. Each ashram takes the responsibility to worship the deity for one year. So Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there to Udupi to see the deity of Lord Krishna and he was very happy to see Lord Krishna's wonderful form. When Lord Chaitanya came there to Udupi, the, the pujaris who were doing the worship of the deity there, they thought that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a Mayavadi sannyasi. Because, of course, Lord Chaitanya had been initiated in, a, in the line of 
Shankaracharya by Keshava Bharati. So they thought he must be a Mayavadi sannyasi. So they did not speak to him because they are Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas don't associate with the Mayavadis. So they did not speak to him. They were, Lord Chaitanya detected that they had some pride. So Lord Chaitanya, but then when they saw Lord Chaitanya dance in ecstasy on seeing the deity of Krishna, then they could understand that he's not a Mayavadi sannyasi, that he's really a devotee, he's really a Vaishnava. Although he had the dress, apparently, of the Mayavadi sannyasi, because no Sika, no Brahmin thread, so they thought, Mayavadi sannyasi. So, when they saw his ecstasy, and chanting the holy name and seeing the deity of Krishna, they could understand that he's a devotee. And so then they began to talk together. And Lord Chaitanya talked to the head of the temple there and he asked the temple in charge there that what is the, the goal of life? And how do you achieve it? So the head of the temple there at Udupi, he spoke to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, telling him that the goal of life was to get mukti, liberation. And there are five kinds of liberation. And he said the process to get liberation is to follow Varnashram, execute the different principles of Varnashram. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this from the head of the temple there at Udupi, Lord Chaitanya was not pleased. And Lord Chaitanya then explained to the person in charge of the temple that the real goal of life for Vaishnavas is to develop love for the Lord. And the process to achieve love for the Lord is hearing, chanting, remembering, serving the lotus feet, offering prayers, uh, wish, uh, bef serving, befriending, surrendering everything, like this. Nine items, right? Navanga Bhakti. Lord Chaitanya said, this is a real process. He said, your process, I see in your process that it's mixed with fruit of desires and speculative philosophy. Because following Varnashram means fruit of desires. You want to get some material benefit. And speculative, you're, you're speculating, trying to understand the absolute truth. You think the goal is liberation. So I see that your philosophy is mixed with both karma and jnana. It's not pure bhakti. But Lord Chaitanya consoled the head of the mat. He said, I'm very glad to see that you worship the deity, that at least you understand the form of the deity is transcendental and you worship the deity as a person. And it was because of this, Lord Chaitanya points out, it was because of the, the manner in which they worship the deity of Lord Krishna, that is why Madhavendra Puri took initiation in the line of Madhvacharya. Madhavendra Puri actually brought the seed of love of God into that line of disciplic succession. He brought the seed of ecstatic love for the Lord. And it was because of Madhavendra Puri, his presence in that line, that Lord Chaitanya also took initiation in the same line. So we, we want to understand the deity is not just simply a statue. Achari Vishnu Shiladir Guru Shu Vaishnavid Natir 
You know that famous verse in the scriptures that if one thinks the deity is just an element, uh, just made of material elements like stone or wood, then yeshyava narakisa, that person is a resident in hell because they're not seeing the transcendental form of the Lord. So when we worship the deity, we have to understand the Lord is not just simply some statue, but he is a, he is a transcendental form. And we worship the deity as a person. So Madhavendra Puri, he revealed, he had some very uh, wonderful pastimes in contact with the deity. When he came to Vrindavan, he was staying at the banks of Govindakund, there beside Govardhan Hill. And Madhavendra Puri's custom was he would not eat. If nobody gave him food, he would not eat. He would not beg. And Krishna was personally coming and bringing him food. Krishna would say, he would come in the form of a coward boy and say, my mother sent me to give you this, take this food. So Madhavendra Puri was live, staying there at Govardhan Hill and when he was there at Govardhan, he had a dream. And in the dream, Krishna appeared to him and told him that he's in the form of a deity buried in Govardhan Hill. And he wanted Madhavendra Puri to take him out from there. So, after having this dream, Madhavendra Puri then organized some men and they began to move, re remove the bushes and dig the ground a little bit and they were able to bring out the form of Lord Krishna from the Govardhan hill. So, often people may find the deity of Krishna but often when they find the deity of Krishna, they, you know, they... They, they don't worship it. You, you can see many forms of Krishna in the museum. You go to the museum in London, you'll see they have very beautiful forms of Krishna there. You'll see in India especially, many museums, they have forms, beautiful murtis. They're, they're not being worshipped. But when Madhavendra Puri brought out this form of Krishna from the Govardhan hill, he installed the deity, he organized the Abhishek and he, uh, and he got all the villagers to come and they had a big festival and they began the worship of the deity. This deity of Krishna, this worship is still going on today. But the deity is no longer there at Govardhan Hill. And the deity was known as Gopal. Now it's known as Srinathji. Srinathji. That's the same deity discovered by Madhavendra Puri. So Madhavendra Puri, after discovering the deity, he began the worship of the deity and everybody came. They brought food and supplies. People came to do the puja. Madhavendra Puri initiated them as brahmanas so they could do the worship. And uh, they began the worship. But then after beginning the worship, Madhavendra Puri had another dream. And in his dream, Lord Krishna instructed him that he told Madhavendra Puri, I'm very hot here. You know, Govardhan can be very hot in the summer. So Lord Krishna told Madhavendra Puri, can you go and bring me some sandalwood and camphor to cool, to cool my body? So Krishna personally instructed Madhavendra Puri like this. So Madhavendra Puri, on getting this order from Krishna in his dream, he then told the brahmanas and the people that you have to continue the worship. 
I'm going to go to Jagannath Puri to get sandalwood and camphor and I will bring it back to apply to the body of Lord Krishna. So Madhavendra Puri then left Vrindavan, Govardhan Hill and walked all the way to Jagannath Puri to get the camphor and sandalwood. Of course, on his way there to Jagannath Puri, he happened to visit Rimuna. And in the small town of Rimuna, he went to see the worship of Gopinath. There's another deity of Lord Krishna there called Gopinath. And when Madhavendra Puri was watching the worship, he saw how they were offering sweet rice to the deity of Gopinath. So Madhavendra Puri thought, oh, it would be very good for me to learn how they make this. Then, when I go back to Govardhan, we can also offer that same sweet rice to Lord Krishna there at Govardhan. But when he was thinking in this way, he thought, oh, this is not right. I shouldn't think about the Lord's offering when the Lord is being offered food. I shouldn't think about it. It's for his pleasure. It's not for me. So then Madhavendra Puri left the temple. But after he left the temple of Gopinath, the pujari completed the offering and brought off the sweet rice which had been offered. And then he put the deity to rest. The deity is a person. The deity also takes rest. So they put the deity to rest. They closed the temple. But that night when the pujari was taking his rest, he had a dream. And in his dream, the deity of Gopinath appeared to him and told him that I've taken one of the pots of sweet rice which you offer today. I've taken it and I want you to come and get it and give it to Madhavendra Puri. He is my devotee and I want you to give him this sweet rice. So the brahmana who was doing the puja had never had a dream like this before. So he was very surprised. So he woke up and he went to, t he took his bath, put on clean cloth because he'd been sleeping, he's not pure. So he took his bath, put on clean cloth, then went into the temple room. And he looked around and he found amazingly enough there was one pot of sweet rice because every day they would offer several containers of sweet rice to the deity and somehow one had gone missing he didn't notice one was missing but when he went into the temple and onto the altar he found one one pot one uh, katori of sweet rice was there so he was amazed that oh the dream was true so he took that clay pot with the sweet rice and he went outside and he called out in the marketplace is anybody here named Madhavendra Puri Ma is anybody by the name Madhavendra Puri here if you are here, please come. You are the most fortunate person. Lord Gopinath has arranged for one pot of his sweet rice for you. Please come and take your sweet rice. So Madhavendra Puri, he heard his name being called and he came and the Brahmana gave him the pot with the sweet rice. Madhavendra Puri not only ate the sweet rice, he ate the clay pot as well. 
He broke the clay pot into tiny pieces made from earth. He brought, and every day he would eat a little bit of that pot because he thought himself so fortunate. The Lord Gopinath has stolen this from me. Madhavendra Puri, however, is very humble. He was traveling alone. He did not have people with him. He was alone. And he, immediately he left. After taking the sweet rice, he thought, people will be looking for me. They will want to honor me. They will think I'm a great devotee. They don't know I'm very fallen. So Madhavendra Puri immediately left Rimuna. And he continued his journey. And he went on to Jagannath Puri. And in Jagannath Puri, he purchased the camphor and the sandalwood. It was quite bulky, sandalwood, quite heavy, camphor. So Madhavendra Puri was prepared to carry it all the way back to Govardhan to offer to the deity which he had found there on Govardhan Hill. So Madhavendra Puri began his journey, but on his way back, and when he was going back, he had another dream. And in the dream, Lord, the deity which he found on Govardhan Hill, that Krishna deity which he found on Govardhan Hill, appeared to him in the dream and told him, I want you to offer all that sandalwood and camphor to the Gopinath deity. The deity from Govardhan Hill said, I am not different from the deity in Ramuna. Gopinath and I are one and the same person. So you can satisfy me, you offer the sandalwood and camphor there in Ramuna to the deity of Gopinath and I will be fully happy and satisfied. So when Madhavendra Puri had this dream, so he went there to Ramuna and he told the pujaris, he told the priests there what had happened and they accepted because they knew Madhavendra Puri to be a great devotee. Lord Gopinath had already stolen one pot of sweet rice to give to him. So if Madhavendra Puri, the same person Madhavendra Puri is coming and saying, that Krishna appeared in his dream and told him to offer the sandalwood and camphor to me, then I should do it. Then they, so they agreed. And Lord Gopinath was worshipped that they rubbed this sandalwood and camphor together and they made the paste and they put it all over the body of Gopinath. Every day. For how many days is it? Oh, 21 days, yeah. 21 days. So for 21 days, this festival, Chandan Yatra, goes on. So in Rimuna, they did like this. So keeping up the tradition, we are also worshipping the deities here in Mayapur by offering them this sandalwood and camphor ground by the devotees for the transcendental pleasure of Lord Krishna. Worshipping the deity is very powerful spiritual activity. Rupa Goswami has mentioned that there are five activities which are particularly potent. He talks about hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, performing Sankirtan in the association, performing Sankirtan, being in the association of devotees, living in a holy place, and also worshipping the deity. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which Rupa Goswami wrote, where he emphasized the importance of these five activities, he gives an example to inspire us.
to worship the deity. He says, uh, he writes, he said, don't look on the form of Govinda because if you look on the form of Govinda, you will lose your attraction for the family, society and friends. So, Rupa Goswami wrote this very nice verse describing, saying, don't look at Govinda, don't look at the deity, but the, he, and the, he, he's telling us why, why we should look at the deity. And he's tell, telling us when we, when we really look at the deity with, in the proper mood, with the right mood, with the right attitude, with the real devotion, then we will be so attracted by the deity of Krishna that the, the affairs of the material world in the form of the family and the society and friends, all of these things will have no more meaning. They will no longer be very attractive to us because they can't, their beauty the beauty of Krishna is so transcendental and powerful and purifying that we can never enjoy the material world again. So, worship of the deity is uh, very important, very powerful spiritual activity. There was another pastime with Ramanujacharya Ramanujacharya was walking one day in the street with his disciples when they saw a young couple together and the young man was very infatuated with the beauty of his female companion. So South India of course is very conservative and particularly in the times of Ramanujacharya means like a thousand years ago. So they were shocked to see the young couple to be so uh, amorous, so entangled with each other. So they invited the couple, that, why don't you come with us? Ramanuja asked them, you come. You, 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 he told the young man, you, you're very attracted by the beauty of your young lady friend. And the young man said, oh yes, she has such beautiful eyes. I'm so captivated by her. I cannot stop looking at the eyes of my girlfriend. So Ramanujacharya told him that you should come with me. I want to show you something. So he brought the young man to the temple and they showed him the form of Lord Ranganath, the deity of Lord Vishnu there in the temple at Sri Rangam. And the man saw the beautiful eyes of Lord Ranganath. And when he saw the beautiful eyes of Lord Ranganath, then he could never again think of the beauty of the eyes of his wife because he saw the transcendental nature of the beauty of the form of the Lord. So it's very important for us, a very important part of devotional service to worship the deities and this next 21 days is a very nice festival which we do for the pleasure of the deity. We come every day, we help to grind the sandalwood for the deity and we come and we see the deity covered in the sandalwood paste. So this gives pleasure to the devotee. And not only to the devotees, but the pleasure of the devotee is in giving pleasure to Krishna. When Krishna is happy, then the devotee is happy. The happiness of the devotee is in making Krishna happy. Right? We want to make Krishna happy. And 
So how to make Krishna happy? This is the purpose behind this festival. We offer this sandalwood paste and in this way we hope we can give some pleasure to Lord Krishna. We can make our life successful by giving pleasure to Krishna. In the material world, everybody is working for their own pleasure. They're all trying to satisfy their senses, the material body, which is never satisfied. They're simply working hard, laboring, trying to satisfy our material desires. And we're always disappointed. We never get the real happiness we want. But if we try to do a little service for Krishna, then we can experience real pleasure, transcendental pleasure. So, understanding the transcendental nature of the deity, Lord Chaitanya took initiation in that line of Madhvacharya. It is said, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took two elements from each of the four sampradayas. So from the Madhvacharya Sampradaya, he took, along with the worship of the form of the Lord as being transcendental, he also took the item of the complete refutal of the Mayavadi philosophy. So this was also very pleasing to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that Madhvacharya was very much against the Mayavadi philosophy, he defeated it in many arguments and he wrote many commentaries defeating Mayavadi speculation. But the worship of the Krishna deity is especially significant. That we as Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we understand the deity to, to be the person. And we see how the deity performs many amazing pastimes. Just like we said, the Gopinath deity could, could steal the sweet rice. So it got the name Shirakora Gopinath, the deity who stole the sweet rice. And similarly, there's another deity called Shakshi Gopal, the witness deity that the deity came as a witness for the young brahmana to support the words of the young brahmana. The deity walked all the way to the, to the village, to the hometown of the brahmana to give evidence that what the young brahmana was saying was true and had actually happened. So Krishna can walk. Not only did he walk, Krishna also talked with the brahmana. Because when the brahmana was asking Krishna to come with them, at first the deity was saying, oh, I'm only a deity, I cannot walk. But the brahmana said, well, if you can talk, why can't you walk? And so Krishna was defeated. Prabhupada said, Krishna was defeated. And so Krishna, the deity agreed to walk. So he got the name Shakshi Gopal, the witness deity. And similarly in Jagannath Puri, Lord Jagannath performs many, many pastimes, many, many pastimes for the pleasure of his different devotees. Sometimes Lord Jagannath will uh, take, do d many different tricks, r removing different ornaments or clothing from his body giving them to devotees. Similarly, there was a deity of Balaji in South India, Tirupati, and this deity used to go and play chess with this other devotee. There was this one devotee called Hati Ram Swami, and he used to play chess with Lord Balaji. And one day the necklace of Balaji went missing. And they found it in the, in the ashram, they found it in the place of 
Hati Ram Swami. And they thought Hati Ram Swami had stolen it. But he said, no, every day I play chess with the deity. So then they, they doubted, they could not believe it. But then they, they gave some test to Hati Ram Swami. The, and Hati Ram Swami, that night the deity came into the home and Hati Ram Swami had to do something with sugar cane, he had to eat all the sugar cane or something. And so the, the elephant actually came there that night and ate all the, all the sugar cane. So they, they saw that this Hati Ram Swami was actually the real devotee. So they, made, they put him in charge of the temple at Tirupati. And even today, the Hati Ram Swami ashram, they're the ones who make the Mongol Arti sweets to offer to Lord Balaji. So, so many pastimes are there with the deities, how the deity's body is completely pure and transcendental. The deities, different deities do many things. There was other deity in Lord Chaitanya's time, the, the devotee, uh, what was a young boy, what was his name again? Raghunandan Thakur. Raghunandan Thakur was asked by his 